All right. Well, my name is John McConkie. If, uh, if you don't know me, I actually go to Second Service. I've been, been in this church uh, for a couple years now. Uh, I've been a Christian quite a few years. And just a little bit about myself. I'm a, I'm a teacher by trade. I teach for York Technical Institute. I teach anatomy and physiology, pathophysiology, pharmacology, uh, stuff like that. So mainly just stuff on the human body, which will actually help us when we get into our learning of the law, when we're going to go over dietary laws and different things that they did that actually was very, very medical and actually did have some great medical uh, approaches to it. So this is the Old Testament survey, the Old Testament survey. We are going to go over the Old Testament. Now, we're not going to go through the Old Testament because that would take us forever, and we have about 12 weeks. But what we're going to do is I'm going to take this like a college class in a sense, that it's going to be a survey, meaning we're going to go over the highlights of specific things within the Old Testament to help you to understand it. Because one of the biggest problems with the Old Testament is the fact that when you read through the Old Testament, let's just take, um, I know Keith and I were just talking about Judges. Judges, so you take Judges and you all of a sudden read about these people or those people. And you don't know, I'm like, you're like, okay, who are these people? And it, let's just say you also read the Old Testament like I did, you know, when I, before I was 21, I read it like six times all the way through, you know, from cover to cover. And so I read through it and I, you know, and you're just, it doesn't really go chronologically if you just read through it. It doesn't, it kind of, you hear about this guy here, you may hear about this person over here, about this land over here, and it's very, very confusing. So that's what we're going to talk about. We're gonna talk about different things about the lands, we're gonna go over maps, we're gonna take some t talk about some dates, we're gonna go over specific issues in the Old Testament, and we're gonna help you to understand it. So. What are we going to be studying in this course? Well, we're going to be studying three major things in this course. We're going to be studying the Old Testament. Then we're going to go into something that you've probably never heard of. And on Wednesday nights, uh-oh, we, oh, there it is, that we probably never heard of. And we actually did this on Wednesday nights. We're going to be studying the intertestamental period. Now, the intertestamental period is a period from between around 450 BC. Now, I, I don't, I, throwing out dates is kind of difficult when you're teaching history, and it's, we're not here to have you guys memorize dates, but I will have to give dates during this class because it's going to help us to understand things. So we know that the Malachi, which, is, which if you don't know is the last book of the Old Testament, the last prophet actually of the Old Testament, was written around between 450 and 430 BC. The Old Testament kind of ends there. And many people, they see that as the end, and it's like, what happens between 450 and Jesus? A lot of people call it the, you know, the silent years, but it was anything but silent. So we're going to talk about that time. And during that time, we'll go over many different things, which we'll get to in just a little bit. Now, the third thing we're going to go over, uh, I do want to talk a little about the early church history a little bit. I'm a, before I began my studies in the Old Testament, uh, you know, my last degree, I went through a lot of history courses and I started studying the history of the church. History of the church is fascinating of where we got where we are today. It's wonderful. And if you want, at the end of the intertestamental period, we will go into uh, early church history or church history for a few weeks if you guys choose to continue on for a little bit. But I, I promise you, you will find it fascinating because understanding where we come from is very important and who the people were who brought us here. All right, so why study the Old Testament? Well, the Old Testament basically tells us everything we need to know about the New Testament. You've got to remember that all the people, the people who were writing the New Testament, the apostles, Jesus, Paul, they were all Jewish. The, Old, the New Testament was not written during this time. They wrote letters, but just, and we'll find out this when we, get to, we, when we get to the early church history, that many of those letters were not available to people during this time. They did not become available for sometimes up to 100 years later. So the New Testament, as we know it, was there, but everything came from the Old Testament. All the scriptures, all the ideas, 
all the things would it come to the, from the New Testament came from the Old Testament. So that is an important thing to understand, and that's how I'm going to approach it. So that you, so the key is if you can understand the Old Testament and understand the people, the concepts, what went on, then it is really, really easy to understand the things in the New Testament. For instance, my favorite is when we deal with the, Jesus in, at the well with the lady, the Sumerian lady. She's like, well, you Jews worship over here. We Sumerians worship over here. What the heck, what the heck does she mean by that? Well, let me tell you something. The Jews, the Jewish people and the disciples with Jesus knew exactly what she was talking about. Okay, we'll go talk about Samaria, the splitting of the kingdoms, what happened in, this, in the um, Israeli captivity. We're going to talk about all of that and what led up to this hatred of the Samaritans. Okay, we'll get to that. So the Old Testament is very, very important. So I, I, now, one of the things I do in my PowerPoints, and I do this for my students at school, is that I always make my PowerPoints available. So if you can't read this, oh, I got three TVs. Oh, you're, you're the best, man. Dude, you, you rock. So if you can't read this, that's OK. These PowerPoints, this is actually being recorded. Am I like walking too far away from the camera? OK. This is actually being recorded. So you can, you can watch this. And it's also, the PowerPoints will also be available online so that you can go back and study it yourself. Now, for our purpose today, we're not going into a lot of deep details, so may or may not, but starting next week when we get into polytheism and we get into the lands of the Bible and stuff like that, you're going to definitely want to have this PowerPoint available because I write tons of information in my PowerPoints, and that's how my students study for their tests. Now, you're, you're not my students, but, and we're not going to have tests, but the good news is, is that it's going to be available. So. You are? Darn it. All right, well, I guess that's another test I got to write for this week. I, gotta, I, I write enough of them every week. So a little bit about the Old Testament. Now, first of all, from Abraham to Malachi, it's written over about 1,600 years. Okay. Now, why do I say from Abraham? Now, why didn't I say from, from Noah or from Adam? Because the thing about the Old Testament we have to understand, starting at around Genesis chapter 11, you see Abraham coming in, and from that point on, for the rest of the Old Testament, we find it's all about the people, the Jews. So if you read before that, it, it gives you a little, good, a little bit of history, but it doesn't really go that much into that. So our focus is really on the Jews. So another thing about the Old Testament that we have to understand is two things. It's historical and it's geographical. Historical, it's all about history. The New Testament really, historically, was really about 30 to 50 years long. That's it. And they don't really go into tons of information. It's not bad, but it just doesn't focus on, that, on history. The Old Testament is all about history. So there's a ton of different people we're going to have to learn about. We're going to have to learn about the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Medes, the Persians, Edomites, Moab, the Moabites, the Egyptians. We're going to talk about, we can talk about Cush, Mesopotamia. There's a ton of people in there. So it's very historical because we have to talk about historical things that happen. So we will be using dates and times in this. It's also geographical. It was mainly in a place called Canaan, which we actually called, which we now call the Levant, which is actually a Greek word. And you're going to find that we use a lot of Greek. And you're going, Greek? Why is Greek in there? Well, because Greek, after, it, during the intertestamental period, Alexander the Great came and wiped and kind of took over everything and changed everything to Greek. Even during the Roman periods, they spoke Greek. They actually, when they read from the Bible, and if you guys look at the number, the last slide, they talked about the Septuagint. The Jewish, the Torah, the Jewish, the Old Testament was all written in Greek. And we're going to find that that's going to be an important part of our understanding. Okay? So geographically, we talk about multiple different lands and places. I will give you maps. We will show you these guys. So the key is, is that when you see them, you'll think in your mind, oh, those are those guys who live over here or over here. 
let me tell you, nothing better than when you think when you're reading something in the Old Testament and you know what you're reading about. That is exciting. So the next thing is it focuses on God reaching out to his people. We've got to remember, they didn't choose him. He chose them, just like he chose us. He brought us here. We're here because God brought us here. And we're grateful for what he did for us. He literally, and you will be surprised, especially when we get into the law, you will be surprised on how much God really did give to them. On Wednesday nights, we're going through the prophets in the last, and we're going through Ezekiel, and we always learn, read about all this stuff when you read the prophets, how it seems like God is angry, God is mean, God is this, God is that, but, he's, but trust me, we're gonna go through and I'll show you how much he gave to the people. And you'll understand when you read the prophets why God was a little upset. And he, he was justified in it. So it was him reaching out to people. And it's their rejection of him. The hardest thing for me to understand in the Old Testament when I began was that mm, they didn't want God. No matter what he did for them, they, they basically just said, oh, that's it, God, we're going to do our own thing. But the good news is, in the end, their eventual focus on them. They eventually did turn to God after the Babylonian captivity, and they served God for the most part. And we see that when we come to the time of Jesus. We're going to end up there. It's based upon the law. We're going to go through a whole entire day on the law, what that means. The law was basically what God gave them to teach them. Why do they need that? Well, when people are brought out of captivity, when they were under slavery for many, many years, 400 years, they had no, they had no idea how to manage life for themselves. They had nothing. They were, everything was taken care of for them. Thus, the reason why we're going to, when we talk about this, they're going to continue to say, well, let's just go back here again. It was easier then because they had to do everything on their own. So God, the law was, ba was basically given to them to show how to serve him, how to deal with life. We're even going to go into some health care stuff on how to do things like, for instance, skin diseases, how to deal with, with menstruation, how to deal with washing, all this other stuff, which was very good because it's going to keep them alive when they get in. It continues to Malachi into the intertestamental period. What should we call it? Well, there's a couple things. The Jews call it the Torah. And sometimes I will mention the Torah, whatever. When I'm talking about the Torah, it really is the Old Testament. The Old Testament. And it has, a, it, you know, it's really the same thing. Uh, do Protestants and Jews agree on what the Old Testament is? Yes. Okay. Now, re now notice I said Protestants. I mention that specifically because um, we will deal with this issue of the Apocrypha. If, you know, if, you ever heard of the, if you've ever heard of the Apocrypha, you'll know, if you came from Catholicism, you'll know some of this. That was kind of a problem for many years in the, in the early church, Christian church, that is. However, nowadays, for the most part, Protestants and Jews do agree on what the books are of the Old Testament, and so they mostly agree. So they, yes, they do agree, but it's mostly. Basically, the difference is between the, what the Jews read and what we read is just a few things on, for instance, uh, Ezra and Nehemiah are two different books. But to the Jews, they're one. The Book of Kings, two different books. The Book of Samuel. Is, and they, they will also name some of their books a little bit differently. They will organize the Torah a little differently than the Protestants do. But for the most part, it's really about the same. And that's the good news. And I like knowing that because it makes me feel like, okay, well, they wrote it. The Jews wrote it. They know what they're doing. They were, they've had their history and everything. And do we agree with them? Yes. Oh, that's good news. I like that. So let's talk a little bit about the New Testament, the difference between the New Testament and the Old Testament. Well, the... <coughs> Sorry, when I normally, uh, when I was in front of students before I was in a smaller, smaller classroom, or now I'm just like on Zoom in, a, in my shorts and a t-shirt going, hey guys, let's talk about the human body, you know? <laughs> All right, so 
The New Testament starts from about around 4 BC. Now, one thing I do want to point out to you guys that what I do, nowadays in, his, in history, if anybody, if any of you guys want, read any history or watch history or anything else, they don't call it BC and AD anymore. It's really disgusting if you ask me because our whole entire what we call Julian calendar is based upon Jesus. But we wanted to, but now the world has taken Jesus out of that. So now we, the world calls it BCE for before common era and CE common era. Now, granted, the, 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 dates are, the dates are based upon one guy, Jesus, okay? So I refuse to, to get rid of before Christ and Anno Domini, which is in the year of our Lord, meaning after Christ. So you're going to see that I, I won't do that. There's no, because to me, listen, that's what we do. All right, most of the, old, of the New Testament quotes came from the Septuagint and the Hebrew manuscript, manuscripts, okay? So now, we, first, we got to understand that in the beginning, prior to 250 BC, the, New, the Old Testament was Hebrew. And it, was, it still is Hebrew, but after 250, for those for people we call the diaspora, and we're gonna get into that later, all the Old Testament, except for that which is in, around the Judean area, was all in Greek, the Septuagint. So there, they were written in Greek and Hebrew. It was compiled in around 382. The New Testament as we know it was compiled in 382 AD, okay? So it took about over 300 years to put the, old, the New Testament together. We can talk about that later on at the end if you want. If we can keep stay a couple extra classes and go with that. It's very interesting how we actually brought the Bible together. It's really not focused on history or geography, but on Jesus which is the reason why we do this. And that's thus another reason why to understand the Old Testament because the Old Testament points everything to Jesus. Because we're gonna talk about, especially with the law, you just can't do it. They could not do it. And we go into that, when we get to the law and we go into those things in that class, you're gonna find that that's exactly what was going on. They just couldn't do it. And they just said, forget it, many, many times, but not always. It's highly conceptual. Everything's on concepts, concepts about baptism, concepts on the Trinity, on the Last Supper, concepts about, you know, what God desires from us, concepts about the law, how God brought, brought us from the law to, to, the, to grace and mercy in Christ Jesus and forgiveness. Jesus didn't teach anything new. He was very specific on that. He's like, I didn't come to get rid of the law, but what? To fulfill it. How do you fulfill something if you don't talk about it? That's all he talked about. So everything was from the Old Testament. Very conceptual. All right, he also shows God's true heart. We will see God's true heart throughout the, all of the Old Testament. We're going to see how much mercy and, and grace and just how wonderful God is in the Old Testament, how he, he reached out to people. And like I said, almost all the teachings were taken from the Old Testament. So during, let's talk about the intertestamental period. The intertestamental period, again, is between 450 and 70 AD. Cons, there's a ton of concepts that were not mentioned in the Old Testament that we're gonna go through. For instance, Pharisees and Sadducees were not mentioned in the Old Testament. We find that happening after the diaspora during the intertestamental period. That's where those guys come about. We'll, go, we'll talk about them. Baptism, for the most part, was not really taught in the Old Testament. It was, it was more intertestamental period. They were, they, though they talked about ceremonial washing and washing this stuff, it became more conceptual once we got into the intertestamental period. The Maccabean Revolt and Hanukkah, that's a huge thing. We're gonna go into a lot of in information about that because that was a big turning point and also brought about what caused them to hate the Romans so much. They didn't talk about synagogues. We'll go into what synagogues were. Synagogues didn't come out, come around until after 538, during the time they, they returned from, from the um, Babylonian captivity. They didn't really talk about the resurrection of the dead for the most part. That was a newer concept from the intertestamental period. 
And they didn't talk about the Dead Sea, the Dead sea Scrolls and the Apocrypha, which the Apocrypha was written during that time, which we'll go into that. So if, you're, if, if some of these things you're going, wow, what the heck, what are those talking about? What are those guys? We will get into that, I promise. Yes, ma'am. Right, the diaspora, and we have a whole class that's going to be about that, but the diaspora basically means a dispersion. That God, at, during the Babylonian captivity, people got scattered. But what we're, going to, what we're going to talk about is how much that helped Christianity. Because what happened is, before, only Judah, that's where Jews were. Jews were here. That's where they were. There was nobody else in Judah. But now, once we, after that point, they come back from the Babylonian captivity, we're going to find them in Egypt. We're going to find them in Mesopotamia. We're going to find them in what we now know as Turkey. I mean, Paul comes from where? Tarsus, which is, which is southern Turkey, way north of this. These, and what, by that point, when they were dispersed, that helped Christianity immensely, helped the spread of Christianity. So, yeah, thank you. So, now, the intertestinal period also was one of the most active times of the Jews. They wrote more stuff then. You, if you ever read Josephus or anything like that, that was, he was written during this time. Helps us to understand many of the teachings. All right, what will we be studying in this course? Well, this is, the, this is where we're going to get the important stuff here. This week, we're going to do a little on the history of Old Testament. Next week is polytheism. Now, don't run away from that because polytheism just means many gods. We have to, I really thought, thought in myself, and for preparing for months to try to figure out what would be the best thing to start with, that's it. If you, one thing you got to understand about the Jews in the Old Testament is they had a problem with other gods. It is mentioned hundreds of times, and their big problem came from that, and the whole thing. The, them taken away in captivity, the whole time where, where the, tri the northern tribes, ten tribes were basically disappeared, they're gone, no longer in existence, all because of that. So we're going to go into that next week, and I think you'll find that very interesting when we do that. Lands and people of the Old Testament, we're going to go of all the neighbors, all the Ite brothers. So the Ite brothers, the Canaanites, the Moabites, the, the, the Hittites, I always like calling them the Ite brothers, Basically, those guys, we're going to go into all those guys. We're going to talk about Egypt, why Egypt's important. We'll even talk about where Abraham comes from in the land of Ur. So, we're going to talk about the law. We're going to talk about judges and early history. Because let me tell you, there, when we get to the judges period, there's a major things happen and also major problems happen in that time. The kings. We're going to go into the divided kingdom. And if you didn't know that Israel split after 916, the death of Solomon, Israel split into two, which caused a lot of problems. We're going to talk about the prophets, the Babylonian exile. We're going to spend some time on that. That's a huge thing on what we have there. We're going to talk about the return from exile, and of course, then the intertestamental period. So before I go on, is there any questions? I know I'm, this is very, yes, sir. We're going to get to that in just a minute. Yeah, we're going to get to that. We're get, we've got to go through all the books here in just a minute. Okay. What was the, Septuagint? the Septuagint is the Greek version of the Old Testament. Now, guys, what I promise you now, I'm throwing these words out, and the reason why I'm doing it and not explaining them is because I'm hoping to pique your interest, which sounds like it, it's happening. It's piquing your interest. The goal is, is that we will get to all of this stuff. We will spend time for everything, and I'm doing that on purpose because I'm like, I want you to think, oh, what is this? What is that? What are we going to go over? So we're not here just to talk about dates and times. We have a lot to go over. So, all right. Um, and also, like I mentioned, if you want, in the very end, we can continue on into Christian history a little bit and go through that because that's actually very fascinating. All right, so to answer the question, how is the Old Testament put together? Well, the Protestants put it together this way, and actually um, we can thank uh, Jerome and Martin Luther for this. They both did a great job because Jerome in 380 wrote, I think 384, wrote the Latin version of the Old Testament. So the first time the Old Testament was really put together as one book 
was during that time. Martin Luther had a hand in splitting up some of the stuff, which we'll get to in just a minute. Now, to answer your question, these are basically, this is how we break apart the Old Testament, and they're broken apart in a couple different ways, in classification and chronology. Chronos is the, is the word for time. Chronos is the t word for time and classification. So what we do is we classify the books, and the first books um, w is what we call the Pentateuch. Pent is the word for five. So Pentateuch is the first books, and those are Genesis through Deuteronomy. The next one are our historical books, which we will go into a little more details here in a minute, but the next historical books are Joshua, and I'm sorry, it says screenshot, but it should say Esther at the end. Those are all historical. Now, the reason why we call them historical is because Joshua started first, Esther ended around 450. Yeah, about, well, actually, probably about 480, actually, B.C. So that's why they're historical. So Ezra and Nehemiah is in there, but everything is from Joshua to Judges, and, and they basically go historically from there. Now, the next ones are the books, are the poetry books, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Then we have the major prophets and the minor prophets. All right. So let's take a look at it. The Pentateuch, Genesis through Deuteronomy, okay, the Pent, five books. Now we know that that was written by Moses because it even says there that Moses wrote this out. Now the interesting thing about this is the fact that in, the he in Hebrew, back in the day, they actually had some of the earliest forms of writing. Now, if you ever do any kind of research at all, you'll find that some of the, big, the forms of writing was kind of a three different ways of doing it. There was, there was the um, cuneiform, which is basically means wedge. They're kind of wedges, and they're this way and this way. They had, they had hieroglyphs, which is what Egypt did, which is their pictures of things. And they actually had writing, which is what the Hebrews did. The Hebrews actually had a writing which is really interesting because this happened way before, e and I really believe this, I believe the Hebrews had this way before China had their writing, okay? Before those guys did. So the Hebrews had this way back, and they were one of the first people to actually do writing with specific symbols for words and not just wedges as they do in cuneiform. So we do know that writing comes back. And this is actually a blessing to us because we now can read it. A lot of stuff was not written. And for instance, if, um, when we, if we ever talk about the, the median, the medias, the medians, which basically were guys or were near words like Persia now, they didn't have writing, so we don't know much about them. So we ever, if everybody's ever heard of the Medes and the Persians, there wasn't, media didn't have any writing, so we can only go by historical stuff from other people. All right. Now, uh, by the way, Pentateuch is Greek, and this is what we're going to find out a lot of things that, for instance, Deuteronomy is Greek, Pentateuch is Greek. Remember we said how important Greek is? Why are, did, did Moses call, write it in Greek? No, he wrote it in Hebrew. Why do we, why we have these names in Greek? Now, when we get to the intertestamental period, you're going to understand that because guess what happened? Everything changed to Greek. So we will be using Greek words for all of this stuff. All right. So uh, Joshua begins around 454. That's when they come back. Judges around, the land at the time of the judges was around 350 years. There was a lot of judges in those times. That, about 350 years that went through. Ruth was a Moabite, okay? Ruth was a Moabite. Now, Moab is, was really a, a kind of, their, they were kind of cousins, but they weren't really, they didn't really get along. First and second Samuel be, begins with judges, with the judge Samuel, and ends uh, with King David's death. So understand that when you're reading first and second Samuel, you're only going to get to King David. If you want to get past King David, you're going to go to the kings. Any questions? All right. 
So 1st and 2nd Kings begins with Solomon and ends with the Babylonian exile. Okay, we'll get, in, we'll get into the Babylonian exile, what all that means. The focus is on Israel as a nation and the splitting of Israel and Judah. Yes, the, the tribes split right after Solomon. Solomon did some really dumb things. I mean, I guess when you have 800 wives, there you kind of kind of messes with your brain a little bit. I don't know. So, you know, one one wife, I'm sure, guys, you can say, kind of messes with your brain then too. But think about having eight. You ever think about having 800? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Thanks, Wayne. Yeah. So, ever ever thought about having 800 wives, or you know, how would you, or how would you like to have, you know, if you're a wife and you have you have to share your husband with uh, 799. You know, wives, you got to share them. I mean, I can, I can only imagine what sharing Tom would, oh, you'd, you'd be like, oh, I'll see you next year sometime. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk later, right? We'll talk later. And don't, and don't worry, if you don't, I don't want to talk to you right now. You've got 799 to talk to. You're, they'll, they'll be okay. So it's great to read if you want to read about the Assyrian exile of Israel, which we will go into. Good information on Elijah and Elisha. Now, it's interesting, it kind of, I always kind of wondered, why Elijah and Elisha? We know about those guys. They, provide, they perform tons of miracles. But you know, there's not a book for those guys. They don't have an Elijah book, an Elisha book, the book of Elijah. They don't, and I don't, always wondering about that. And I think one of the biggest reasons why, because they were, they were northern prophets. They were northern prophets, which what that means is that those were just part of the bad guys, you know, the guys up north, and they never, once they, they split from God, they kind of did their own thing. A little bit of a problem there. All right. The focus is on uh, the first and second chronicles. So now kings is going to focus on the northern tribes. So if you want to know about the book of kings, it's all about the northern tribes. There's some about southern, but it's almost all northern. Whereas First and Second Chronicles will focus only on the southern tribes. So again, this is something important to understand. Because if you read it, you're going to get only a particular focus. And that focus is only going to be on the northern or southern tribes. So if you want to learn about the people up north, like King Ahab and all the other bad guys, that's um, kings, if you want to learn about Hezekiah and all those little guys down south, that is Chronicles. So please remember that. And again, you'll have my PowerPoint if you want to go back through this again. So important stuff to remember. Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. All right, so Ezra and Nehemiah were written about 50 years after they came back from Babylon exile, from the diaspora. Ezra and Nehemiah are historical books. They're histories. And I, I, I tell you, if you read Ezra and Nehemiah, you really need to read books like Zechariah, Haggai, um, and Malachi, because they will focus on the same things. If you try to understand Ezra and Nehemiah and not know exactly what they're talking about, what the dates they're talking about, most likely you're going to get confused. Because they're going to go into all this different stuff like, you know, who, you know, what, who, uh, Xerxes, Adazerxes, Darius, Cyrus, they're going to name all these kings, and you're like, who the heck is those guys? So, so it's important to understand that. Now, Ezra, actually, they believe that Ezra wrote the book of, books of Chronicles. They believe Ezra wrote those, because Ezra was a priest. So he was also a leader. Nehemiah was the cupbearer of the king, meaning that Nehemiah basically, you know, drank the, drank the stuff before the king did. So if he keels over, the king's like, ha, I knew someone was going to poison me. Take him away. You know, it's, that's what he did. And so guess what? The king kind of trusted these guys. And it's interesting because in, the, in here, Nehemiah was allowed to come back from Persia which he was, which is present-day Iran, and he to lead people back into Israel. Okay, so Nehemiah did that. Esther, now Esther's interesting. Esther basically was, you know, you know God's not mentioned in Esther. If you read, read Esther, you're going to see God's not really, there's not talking about God in there. It's a very interesting book, and it's really focused on King Xerxes, which is one of the Persian kings. So, but it's interesting 
how God used her to save the Israelites. It's amazing how, what God did to use her to, to save the Israelites. But understand that Esther is really written at the very end, and thus the reason why Esther is at the end of the historical books, because it's really about the ending time that we talked about. So, all right. Job, as, or, or as Isaac was some Yob. Isaac would call him Yob. So we're, we're, we're working on uh, Isaac. Isaac. I, I, I spent a lot of time with Isaac, and he, he, uh, we're working on Isaac's. Uh, I know what he, um, he was talking about, uh, the hurricane. Uh, he, 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 was, he was like, hurricane, hurricane. And I'm like, Ukraine? Yeah, Ukraine. And I, I said, oh, uh, and he said, even, even, e Ivan. Ukraine, Ivan. And I'm like, what does he talk about Russia and Ukraine for? No, 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 come, no, come to find out it was about Hurricane Ian, but I got Ukraine Ivan out of that, and I'm like, why are you calling Russia Ivan? I know that's a, we used to call that that, but why would you call, yeah, I don't know, I don't get it, but, you know, we had a good, we had a good laugh, so, all right, so Job, now no one really knows when Job came about. And it's interesting that, the, that Satan is only mentioned a few times in the Old Testament, many times in the New Testament, but we see him with Job. Now, interestingly enough, um, we, most scholars believe it's probably around 2000 BC, which would take him around the same time as Abraham. Okay, so it, that's a good thing to know if that's true. It's a good thing to know because when we know that at that time people really weren't seeking God they were doing their own thing we'll talk about that next week and and God brought Abraham out so if Job was there Job knew God and his friends knew God and that's that's a good thing so all right the major prophets now the what are what are major versus minor prophets okay not that these guys were I'm a, I'm a major prophet. Yeah, this, is, this minor prophet over here, he's no good. Yeah, he doesn't know what he's talking about. No, it's not that at all. It basically is the amount of information that they taught. So the major prophets are the guys who wrote a ton of stuff. Like Jeremiah, they, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel. They had like 40-some chapters. And Isaiah, I think, had 60-some. And it's amazing on how big their books are. That's why they call them major prophets. And we will go over the major prophets separately because those books are very detailed in what they describe. And I'll tell you, we're going to need to go through them because until you go kind of go through a conceptual idea of each of the prophets, what they meant, for instance, Ezekiel was during the time of Babylonian exile. Isaiah was during the time of the, of the um, Assyrian exile. So, I mean, they have very specific things they talk about. All right, uh, let's see, Daniel. Now, we're going to go into a little bit about Daniel because Daniel specifically talks about the last four kingdoms. Now, it's amazing. I, you know, I don't, I, I come from the, from the charismatic church. I'm not charismatic anymore, but I come from the church, so there was a lot of weird stuff taught there and a lot of the weird stuff when it comes to these prophetic books taught there. And so I'm always skeptical about a lot of the real big prophe the prophecies that, well, that's his, that hasn't come yet today. And it was 306 years, which means it has to be this man. I don't really go into that. So, but what we're going to talk about with Daniel is that he's going to specifically tell us who the next four kingdoms are, and he's going to describe them very well. And it's very interesting to read Daniel because you learn a lot about history. Now, Daniel's interesting because Daniel's the only dude who actually made it through all the bad times. He was taken away to Babylon in about 605. During the time Nebuchadnezzar was taking people away, he didn't see the destruction of the temple. He didn't see it. But Daniel was part, we know Daniel was there in the very end when Babylon was defeated. We're going to talk about the 70 years the 70 year exile this, that, that Jeremiah talks of, Daniel was actually there to see it all happen. He's an amazing guy, the guy he actually, the only, he's the only one who lived it through it all of it. All right, the minor prophets. There are 12 minor prophets that start from about 800 BC. 
and they will deal with specific things. Some of them will deal with only the northern tribes, some of them deal with the southern tribes, but you know, they're all, they all have specific things they talk about. Um, and some of them are very specific to that. So here, this, is, this is the last slide. This is basically the list of all the prophets. Now, I know you can't really see this, but the good news is, is that if you want to know who was where, what they did, that's a great thing to look at because that'll help you because when you read these guys and you get through all the, and God's going to destroy and God's going to destroy and God's going to do this over here, then you, you, know, you can see exactly who he was talking to. So with that, and this is the end, I hope I didn't bore you guys, there is a lot more to come. Is there any questions? Now, let me just give you just some advice. Some, there is a lot of information. You're gonna come out of here and your brain is going to be like mush. I teach my students that, the, that the, does anybody know which organ in the body uses the most energy? The brain. When my students, I tell my students that when you go through school, you learn all this stuff. That's why you're so tired. Those who you remember you were in college and you were in, in high school or whatever, you're studying for this or studying for that, and you walk away and you're just like, dude. You know, that's what you're going to feel like because the brain uses tons of energy. So I, the good news is I'm going to give this to you the PowerPoint, you're gonna have the videos. If you wanna go through this stuff again, you have it all. And just remember, study it six months down the road or whatever, to try to refresh yourself. So if there's no other questions, thank you so much. Next week, we're gonna go over polytheism. So we'll talk, I'll sh show you, we'll talk a little bit about Baal, Asherah poles, some of the Egyptian things. We're gonna talk about how, it, how they infiltrated everything. And we'll even go into some of the stuff with, um, the Greek gods and stuff like that. All right, guys, thanks so much. Have a great day. All right.